Okay, so the question yes. was, the question was, uh, what, what, uh, in terms of the retrial, what are the charges that are going to be re-examined, and what is the evidence that will be presented? First of all, we will have to deal with everything that it is writing is a talmud against Jesus. We have to analyze it, and and we will find that there are many holes there. All right. Closer to the mic. Or you can hold it here. Okay, so this is one of the basic things. From the other side, we have the Torah. What, what God has to say with all the gematios, etc., it is very important to show what really the Torah has to say, what God has to say about Yeshua and the Torah. Would the Shua's own statements, as they are recorded, be entered in in his defense? Well, well uh, what Yeshua said, what's recorded, um, in terms of Yeshua's statements and teachings, will that be? Of course, of course. You say that uh, it, is, it is a fault that Yeshua make himself God. Correct. Or, for example. I'm unclear about a, a couple of things. Yeah. According to Torah, there must be two eyewitnesses. According to Halakha, a man cannot be convicted on his own testimony, right? Yeah, this is one of the things that he was not correct. Now, who are the two witnesses? You talk about the retrial. For your retrial. For your retrial. For, for the retrial, I will be the two witnesses. You will be? Yeah. Ariel, Ariel equal Shnei Edim, two witnesses. <laughs> I, I, I will give the, the witness from the side of Christianity and I will give the witness from the side of Judaism. And there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, deep things behind that statement that you just said that we don't have time to get into. But, um, no, I understand. I was uh, asked, uh, uh, what, what was the question did you ask? My question was the other Jewish men who wrote what he said namely the apostles, will they be accepted as witnesses? Will that be valid? Their so testimony... The, the Shahim of Yeshua, you know, Shimon Kepha, and, yeah. you know, well, well, what they wrote about inside, what he's asking, is that going to be part of the, the evidence? Why not? Why not? Uh, I, I try to say something. Uh, I give example like, they can accuse Yeshua, make himself idolatry, because Christianity make God from, from disease. What Yeshua in the New Testament say about it? So we can bring here we bring, we bring the teaching of Yeshua. What solve all the problem? Is no problem at all. Uh, they came to Yeshua and asked him, "Why you make yourself God?" What was the answer? You are all God and Son of God. Elokim atem uvneliyon kulchem. I said, God said, you are all God and Son of God, etc. In, in the moment... Which is a quote from... It, it's a, it's a the table, table cha chapter 82. Psalms. 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 He, he has a hard time with that word in English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a verse that says that God said, you are all God and Son of God. Unfortunately, you die like he was not, but really, I said, you are all God. And Jesus explain, exp give explanation that everybody, everyone that receives the word of, of God, what from the beginning is Am Israel, after through Yeshua is, is all the nation, he is God and he is son of God. This is what Yeshua said. In the moment we think that only he is son of God, this idolatry. In the moment we, we understand the, that is just the general a, a, a soul that represents this concept of God and Son of God, and it just shows you the way to be Him, to be part of Him. In the moment we understand it this way, no problem from the point of view of Orthodox Judaism. My rabbi told me once, many years ago, if the Christian only understands this thing, what Jesus just said, that everybody Every Jew is God, etc. Like the Torah, it is mentioned many times in the Torah. It was no problem. So then I said to my rabbi, exactly what uh, Jesus said. Oh, really? 
<laughs> it's no problem. So, one of the more basic problem, if we want to make peace between Judaism and Christianity, Christianity will be ne never accept like a, a kosher pig <laughs> if if they still if it, if this is still idolatry. So, so from the Orthodox Jewish perspective, right, one of the big issues, and if, you know, I know I've had conversations with Orthodox Jews, and really, Yeshua being Messiah is not usually not usually the real problem. They they most Orthodox Jews, you know, can can deal with that. That's not usually the issue. The, the usually the issue of, of the divinity, right? And the, and the way they've understood or the way it's been presented um, uh, from an Orthodox Jewish perspective, right? And this is not whether you agree or disagree with the Orthodox Jewish perspective. Because, again, the mission is not to convince Christians about Yeshua. The mission is to convince Orthodox <coughs> Jews about Yeshua. From the perspective of Orthodox Judaism, uh, quoting a verse from Psalms, from Tahini, uh, I, I forget exactly what the what is in Hebrew is. Uh, Tehillim. Tehillim, but eighty-two. So, this, so from the perspective of Orthodox Judaism, if 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 they if if they understand Yeshua. In that perspective, there's they they can get past the 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 whole um, controversy around the the divinity, right? And again, the point here is not to say whether that Orthodox Jewish perspective is correct or not. That's really ultimately. For Orthodox Judaism to wrestle with, right? Just like Christianity has, you know, has things that it has to wrestle with. But that's how, from an Orthodox Jewish perspective, <coughs> that big, big wall that's been there for now a couple of millennia can start to crumble, right? And and the point here is that once the wall crumbles and now Yeshua is no longer taboo and Am Israel can at least agree that he was a, a, a kosher Jew, he didn't teach against the Torah, etc., etc., now there's opportunity for ongoing and continued dialogue. But you have to start somewhere. You've got to start taking bricks out of that wall one at a time. But at least from my perspective, your mileage might vary. It's got to come from, uh, it's got to start from within, uh, within Orthodox Judaism. That's right. and, and that's why, you know, uh, you know, I've spent long conversations the last two and a half days with Ariel and I don't understand all of his perspective, um, his his knowledge and, and, and insight in those areas. I mean, I you know I, I can hardly scratch the surface. Uh, so I don't understand it all. But here's what I understand. I understand that we have an Orthodox Jew who. Who sees Yeshua and the and the teachings of Christianity in the Torah? He didn't get there from a Christian missionary. He didn't get there from a messianic missionary or chosen people ministries or, or, or the, all these organizations. They're all good organizations, mean well. He got there from a completely different path, and yet Hashem has shown him. You know these these truths, and in addition to that, he now has one of the biggest rabbis in modern Orthodox, in, in, in um, you know alive today, who is 
at the right time, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong here, is willing to come public in support of Yeshua. He will be putting himself at great risk to do that. But the hope is that because of who he is and the, uh, the influence that he has, that if he comes public and with, uh, with, with Ariel's um, book and, the, and the, the rabbi's blessing on these teachings from the inner Torah, from Kabbalah and Hasidut, that that might be, it might be enough with God's help to begin to see that wall crumble. May it happen speedily, soon, and in our days. So, whether you agree with Kabbalah, Hasidut, Gematria, Talmud, Retry, I mean, the point is not whether you agree with, with, the, met, with the method here. Because, again, you're not the audience. Why is he here? He's here because his rabbi said, look, when you can show me that the Christian and Messianic world is willing to support this, when, when you can show me that there's some support, some backing from the Christian world, then his rabbi has said, we'll move, we'll move forward. Generation is ready. Okay. He wants to see that that the Christians and the Messianics are willing to support this. Then it's up to them to see if Am Israel is ready. Mm. Right? But, so, it, so whether you agree, you know, with all, all that or whatever, if you, to me, it's very simple. Here's someone who is trying to bring Yeshua back to Am Israel in a way that Am Israel can receive him. That's all I need to know in terms of being able to su support the the effort. So uh, we have uh, we've got uh, about uh, 15 minutes to left officially. Um, so we'll do some more Q and A. Uh, if you need to leave, I know it's a weeknight, so if people need to leave, feel free to leave. If you need more food, coffee, whatever, help yourself. Um, we'll do some some more Q and A for another uh, ten or fifteen minutes, and then we'll officially adjourn. And then I'm sure Ariel, he's not going anywhere. He's captured audience. So, uh, so then if, if 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 people want to come up and talk to him individually. Um, that's great. Just, re just remember, as I said at the front, at the beginning, he speaks Jewish. <laughs> so if you come asking, if you come speaking Christian, he may or may not fully understand what you're asking. Okay, so that, that's just the cultural, re the cultural uh, reality there. So, all right. So, uh, anything else you want to say before we? Somebody want to? Well, I just want to make sure I'm absolutely clear um, that uh, in order to be successful in his case, what I'm understanding is that they will make the case that Yeshua did not claim divinity or equality with Hashem. Is that correct in my understanding? Well, this was one of many other questions that will be there about, about this case from all the side. Okay. I just gave, I just gave an example what the trial will be about. Because from the point of view of Judaism, all the million of Jewish was murdered in the name of Jesus, is, this is false. So we have to prove that <coughs> this is not his, his fault in different way. So, Any other questions? Yes. So what you're saying then, Rabbi, is that we have to do this in a culture, in a legal way, and in a language that Jews are going to understand. Yes, absolutely. Of course. And with 
try to make it in the way that all the world will understand, because this is supposed to be a, in the retry, a short, a short time for all the world to know what is Mashiach from the beginning to the end. Earlier you showed the divinity with the numbers, but yet you're saying you're going to try and not showing his divinity. Uh, so, I don't know that he showed the divinity in the numbers. Didn't he, with, with the triune nature, with 26? Yeah. So, what I show, by the way, that Yuda, Judah plus Samaria equal, equal Yudke Vavke plus Miriam plus Jesus. All the Trinity equal this So you say... 632. He does have the divinity. Is that what you're saying, or he doesn't? Yes, of course. Every Jew has. Bnip Chori Israel, it is written in the Torah, my firstborn Israel. Every Jew has divinity. And every, and every Av Jew, a Christian, that what Paul meant to, 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 to put the, 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 the nation under the water is the act of Ger Toshav, what is Av Jew, that is citizen, citizen of Israel, is, is allowed to live in Israel, is not Ger Tzedek, that had to perform all the six under the 13 commandment. It is, is Av Jew, he receives the word of God, so he's all right, and he has this in potential. Everybody has this divinity in potential in him. So, so, the, so here's where we're talking Christian and, and Jewish. Right. So, um, so his, he, the, the, the issue of divinity from a Kabbalistic, from a Kabbalistic Hasidic uh, perspective is not the, the a way that Messianics and Christians approach, approach divinity. That is correct. So, um, it, they have their way from the Torah to to get there, right? From the Torah, not from the New Testament. No, he's right. Not, he's not coming from the New Testament. So, um, so when when correct me if I'm wrong because I don't, don't want to. For you, but I'm trying to make You're sure. You're translating. When, I'm trying to, I'm trying to translate the best that I can. Uh, not that I'm completely qualified to do that, but the from the perspective of Orthodox Judaism, uh, there's this this concept of uh, sparks. It's a it's a Kabbalistic concept, right? I've heard this. So, and every Jew has the spark of Hashem in him, meaning the every Jew, spark of Hashem, which is this, 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 div, this uh, uh, div, divinity within every Jew, right? <laughs> including, you, you know, including Yeshua, and from what Ariel's saying is when Yeshua was asked by the Pharisees, uh, his response to the question was he quoted that saying that verse from where one of the places where this concept evolves, which is in the book of Psalms. So from an Orthodox Jewish perspective, Yeshua is divine. He's not the only one that's divine. He's not, he is not, uh, he is the only one, and every Jewish is the only one as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like Yitzchak is called Bin Chayich Yitzchak, your only son. It's a concept, it's the soul. Also, but, every but, Jew is the only son of God. But his divinity will be like different from my son Benjamin's <coughs> divinity, obviously, since he's the firstborn. And again, this, I mean, the divinity issue is, is, from, from the perspective of Christianity versus Orthodox Judaism, particularly a Kabbalistic right. approach, is 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 not it's not uh, we're not trying to solve that between Christianity and and Judaism at this point. What we're trying to do is he's trying to 